you're a brilliant Tobadot user, you're part of our amazing community. But I'm quite interested to know a little bit about pre Tobadot days. We were thinking about, kind of thinking scanning wasn't worth it. it had we had Topo Dot at, for the M25 widening schemes, we would have delivered the surveys 50% faster. The yeah, things were, go and scan stuff, which was great, end up with a good point cloud, and spin it around in 3D, and that was about it really, that was about as usable as it got. We were using some other software, which was join the dots, dot to dot, no automation, and basically it got to the point in the company that we hit a brick wall and it was kind of like, should we just not bother with scanning because there wasn't any effective way of, of extracting topo data. And people were getting fed up of paying for scans that they couldn't really use. Yeah. And who would you say is your clientele then? A lot of work for Highways England on our major projects. Yeah. Uh, building projects uh, in their regional business, steel frame buildings, renovations, sewage farms when we work with alliances uh, with the water companies, uh, Crossrail, we've done a lot of work with Crossrail, Network Rail with our Balfour Beatty Rail hats yeah. on, so pretty much every sector. So, so scanning is part of your, it's embedded in your culture now? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Is it, people talk about scanning against traditional methods. To my mind, scanning is now, you would not measure 50 kilometres of road without mobile LIDAR. And why is that? Because mobile lidar is faster, it's more ac it's it, it is more accurate because uh, you get more coverage, safer. Yeah. Uh, there are times when you need, still need boots on the ground to go down through vegetation, down embankments. But for crash barrier to crash barrier, mobile lidar is is really the only that that is that has become the norm. So tell me, how big was your team when you pre dot days? One. <laughs> we were thinking about kind of thinking scanning wasn't worth it, wasn't worth uh, the hassle. We came to Intergeo in Nuremberg in 2011 and as we do I, I ignore the big suppliers because we can see them any day. I was going around looking at all the little stands, the sort of startups and I saw this loud American guy. I thought I'd challenge him and I said you know he had a point cloud up and I said okay show me extract a channel line. That's a curb and gutter and Mauricio went Bang, did the template tool, top of curb, bottom of curb, bang, 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 bang. And it was like, wow. And I, I, I said, okay, show me how you'd pick out a lighting column. And Mauricio did, used one of the tools to pick out a, a, a lighting column. And it was, okay, how would you give me spot levels on 100 metres of roads? And he used the road extraction tool. And I, I just started laughing. And, and, and Ted came over and he, he sort of like Ted would, hey buddy, how's it going, what do you think? And I, and I, I said, in, with typical English sense of humour, I said, well, it's just rubbish, isn't it? Which then he'd offended. And, and he did look terribly offended, and he said, hey, what do you mean, it's rubbish? I said, well, no, it's, I said, that's really good. And he said, well, you just said it's rubbish. And I said, well, that's, sorry, that's, that's English yeah. humour. And I, so at one point I thought he was going to hit me. Uh, but, and then I just, I, I, the, the guys that had come over with us, about 10 guys, I went and I grabbed them and dragged them over, I dragged my boss, I said, look, at, this is it. This is what we need, we've got to do this. And I was just dragging random people out and saying, come and I was laughing and people were looking over at why. And yeah, it was just, it was like an epiphany. It was like, we can actually use the scan data now. Yeah. And that was 2011. We bought a license pretty much when we landed back in the UK. We went from a 250 license. We've now gone up to, I think, two and a half thousand days. And how has that changed your life? We can scan stuff and deliver it. Yeah. If people, and to be honest now, even if we, haven't done something before, we just wing it and say, yeah, we can do that. Because we know if we ring Ted and Mauricio, if there's something special, we, they, they will adapt yeah. for us. And, and Mauricio has updated the, uh, the tunnel tool. We, we scanned an ethane tank in Stockton, 70 metres wide, 40 metres high, and they wanted cross sections at 100 mil intervals yeah. and the radius at any point. So when they lifted the lid of the tank, uh, I think it's 30 tonne lid with compressed air, they needed to know that the lid would actually fit. Yeah. You couldn't do it with the total station because the lid bounced. So we stopped the job for 20 minutes, scanned it, and then they could carry on working. And then we, it, Mauricio did a 
adapted the tool that cut sections at 100 mil intervals and measured the radius. And then when we showed the, the, the guys that, they didn't want to do the CAD drudge. So Mauricio did another build and it exported every radius measurement straight to an Excel spreadsheet at three degree intervals around 360 degrees at 100 mil up 40 meters. And it took 15 minutes to do that. And how, would it, how long would it have taken traditionally? Well, you'd have to, in CAD, on the, ele on the radius elements, you would have had to have interrogated those elements individually and either written down the information or keyed it into a spreadsheet. And basically, it, it was slightly out of tolerance in a small part by a centimetre, yeah. and they just said, because they knew it was only that, they could get a big hammer and smack it. So they had confidence they could call the specialist team from Italy, because it was, it was a specialist team from Italy coming over, to lift this thing with compressed air. Yeah. So they had the confidence that when this really expensive team came over, it would go up. Samsung was the main contractor, and I think the penalty was £100,000 a week Whoa. for not doing the lift. Is that the same with like anything you do with like highways, for example? It's like if you have downtime on the road. So if you can, if you can scan the roads and get them, the project done quicker. There's less traffic management. So as, as well as having not having boots on the ground, as, yeah. as you have to do that for the control points. Yeah. But you don't close roads, which Highways England, uh, that's why they've adopted it as norm now. So you're not putting cones out when you don't need to. We've got some big projects coming up with HS2, the M4, 50 kilometres on the M4 in, in, from Junction 3 to Junction 12. HS2 is the big one, I mean that's 50 miles, yeah. cross country, massive disruption, massive earthworks, yeah. so we think scanning is going to be at the forefront of that as well. And how much has it changed your way of working? We can deliver the data a lot faster, yeah, yeah. because when we first started using scanning on the M25, widening back in 2008 we started, it was a firm that had a, a system called Clearcomb, which was a van with a platform with a total station like a gun turret. It was called Clearcone. They would still have to put cones out on the hard shoulder and it would drive. It was a bit like Corporal Jones's van in Dad's Army. <laughs> They'd stop, the, the, the turret would go up, and then there'd be guys taking sections with a total station from the van, sections down the embankment and across, and then reflector lists across the road. So that was. You can imagine, they, they did that like every 100 metres. So that was massively time consuming. But it, I think if it, had we had Topo Dot at, for the M25 widening schemes, we would have delivered the surveys 50% faster. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And a lot safer. What do you do at Balfour Beatty? I look after all the laser scanning activities for Balfour Beatty.